one of the most common questions that I'm asked is, is how is it possible that one partner in a relationship can be positive and the other one negative, and yet they've had unprotected sex, they've had children, and yet the one partner still remains HIV negative. It all comes down to viral load, all right? There's only certain times when a person living with HIV is contagious. In other words, they can transfer the virus to another human being, or that person's body can bring the HIV virus in, which we've discussed in the Lanahan cells. But let's look, at, let's, let's look at the discordant couple. When a person first gets infected during their window period, when their body is not registering the fact that HIV exists in their body, and HIV has gone into massive replication, during the window period, that person is the most contagious they will ever be for the entire duration of their illness, including when they have full-blown AIDS. So, during the window period, that person will test HIV antibody negative, yet they are able to transmit the virus at an incredible rate. In fact, it's down to one in three sexual acts, unprotected sexual acts, the viral, rep uh, the viral transfer will probably take place. Now, once the CD4s wake up, they then start taking control of the virus, and they force the virus down. So within about six months of a person, generally speaking, becoming infected with HIV, they have this massive peak in the amount of virus in their body. They're able to transfer the virus. Then the CD4s wake up and they kick in and they start to force down the amount of virus in the bloodstream. And your body does this naturally, assuming you're a normal, healthy individual. Your body will do this naturally and it will maintain that for many, many years. For some people, like in my case, it was like 22 years. But let's look at a statistical average. We're looking at about seven years without any intervention. In other words, no antiretroviral therapy is introduced. During those first seven, five to seven years, chances of transmission are actually quite low. The only time that person is at risk of transmitting that virus to their partner is in the event that they have a secondary infection. Now, the secondary infection we discussed when we talked about the Th1 and the Th2 systems. When the Th2 system is engaged, it ignores HIV. HIV goes into full replication. It's like leaving your children at home for the weekend and going away and saying, don't have a party and behave yourselves. HIV goes absolutely ballistic and starts to generate more and more babies and create more of itself, while the immune system is distracted, taking care of whatever that secondary infection is. So what we need to look at in terms of discordant couples is, number one, they need to manage secondary infections. It is only during a secondary infection where viral load starts to increase that risk of transmission will happen. So let's use, I'm going to use an example of a Swaziland miner. All right. He comes and he works in Gauteng, he works on a mine, he goes home every, uh, maybe once a year at the Christmas period, he goes home for a month and they shut the mines down or he goes on leave. When, let's go back to the beginning, when he first arrived in Johannesburg, he had a sexual encounter with somebody that was unsafe. That person had a high viral load and the virus was transmitted to him. He picked up HIV infection. So for the first three, four, maybe five weeks after his exposure to HIV, his viral load was incredibly high and any time he had unprotected sex, the risk of transmission was incredibly high. Chances are one in three sexual acts he would have spread the virus to one of his partners. Now, a year later, or nine, ten months later, he goes home to see his wife in Swaziland. And what's going to happen is his immune system is already activated. It has started to force down the viral load. The CD4s are in control of the situation, albeit temporary, over the course of five or seven years. And he goes home and he has unprotected sex with his wife. Just because she has been exposed to HIV does not mean that transmission has happened or infection has taken place. So that is how it's possible for couples for many, many years to have unprotected sex with one another where one is positive and one is negative and they do not infect or the infection doesn't take place. It is only during secondary infections or if that person does not go on antiretroviral therapy that you're going to find the viral load is going to start to increase and the CD4s are going to start to come down. Now we focus mainly on viral load. That is the most important. Everyone says, oh, my CD4s are, you know, 50 and blah, 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 and they start to panic. The reality of the situation is, is you need to focus on the viral load. What can you do to drive down the viral load? You drive down the viral load, CD4s automatically will increase. And that's exactly what antiretroviral therapy does. Now, in the event that the person is not on antiretroviral therapy, there's a number of things that they can do 
They can keep their stomach clean, for example. In other words, deworm regularly. And I would recommend every three to six months you take a Vermox pill. Um, you ask your, your pharmacist for some Flagyl. Um, and those two things will help you in, in terms of deworming. What we know about deworming is, remember Th1, Th2. Th1 is HIV. Th2 is worms. So your body's focusing on the worms and the parasites in your body. It's distracted from the HIV. Treat the worms, deworm, and you're going to take the burden off the Th2 system so that the resources that it was using and allocated to Th2 can be sent to Th1. So the notion of people transmitting the virus every single time they have sex is a complete myth. All right? I know that that's not necessarily what we talk about in our public messaging, because certain people don't have an understanding, there's, there's ignorance, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of misunderstanding around transmission of HIV. The viral load has to be at a certain point in order for transmission to take place. Those couples where they've been together for a number of years and the one that finds out they're positive and suddenly they're, 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 their partner checks and they're negative, that, those scenarios are very, very commonplace. And we need to be able to explain that to people in a way that they understand it. Now, they think that, okay, this one is a carrier and this one is not a carrier or this one can't become infected because they've got a certain blood type. All of that is complete myth and nonsense. It is based on the viral load. The higher the viral load, the higher the risk of transmission. The lower the viral load, zero transmission can take place.